Hello, friend. Thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Brassy Broadcast. I'm Jen Eads. I'm a musician, a student of the creative universe, and a curious girl full of questions. I'm also the head broad in charge at the Brassy Broadcasting Company, where I partner with the creators, the doers, and the makers of the world to put them in the ears, heads, and hearts of new audiences with podcasts and other audio goodness. If you're feeling inspired to learn more about podcasting after listening to this episode, check out the Brassy Broads Brass Tax Podcasting Course. It's your free introductory podcasting course, and you can find it at BrassyBroad.com. Let's talk about discipline. Discipline is a topic that has shown up in my world a few times lately, enough that I'm taking notice of it before the universe thinks it has to beat me over the head with it and teach me some kind of horrible, painful lesson about discipline. All right, universe, I get it. I'm listening. Let's start with a quote. Inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and get to work. That quote is from painter Chuck Close. I love this quote. I truly believe that the difference between the amateurs and the professionals at the top of their game is showing up and getting to work. That being said, sometimes I struggle with the work part when the inspiration just isn't showing up for me. The work part is fueled by discipline. I don't know about you, but I need processes to help me be more disciplined. So then I'm ready when the inspiration does show up. One of my daily processes is journaling. I was introduced to it years ago in sales training. It's like yoga. I always feel better when I do it, but sometimes I go for months and sometimes just get out of the habit. Right now, I'm working my way through The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And part of that journey is writing morning pages, and I've incorporated my journaling into that daily process. I must do the work. You must do the work. This is where discipline comes in. I'm going to share four actionable steps you can take to help you become more disciplined. Will they work for you? I don't know, but they have helped me immensely. Use them as a starting point to get you on the path to discipline. The first one is know your why. If you aren't crystal clear on your purpose and why you need to be doing a particular activity, it won't get done. What gets you fired up to get out of bed every morning? Do you want to talk about diet and exercise? I don't. I don't want to talk about it. And I don't want to do it. Eating salad and working out are not in the why I get out of bed in the morning. I'm on a mission to empower a thousand voices to enter the podcasting space. Creating tutorial videos and courses fuels that mission, which fuels my soul and gets me to get out of bed in the morning. Listening to podcasts also fuels my soul, and I can listen to lots of podcasts on a three-mile walk. See how that works? I've incorporated something that fuels my soul into an activity that does not. But I'm showing up. I'm getting it done. I'm getting three miles in and lots of knowledge consuming these podcasts. If you want to learn more about the importance of your why, Read Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. I highly recommend it. Now let's talk about behavior. You've got to measure your behavior. I'm a nerd. I went old school and made a spreadsheet in Google Docs. And on my handy dandy spreadsheet, I have listed behaviors that drive my mission and my business forward. Things like attending networking events speaking engagements and presentations, client meetings, producing my podcast, promoting my podcast on social media. 
teaching people how to listen to podcasts and creating tutorial videos. I have a point value assigned to tasks and I update my spreadsheet every evening, or at least that is the plan. Again, I'm still working on that discipline thing, but I'm making progress. Something that I've just recently started doing is using a timer to focus on completing a single task. I set the timer on my phone for 30 minutes and then sit my butt in my chair and focus on the task at hand for 30 minutes. Doing this helps me stay focused when I'm editing shows. No checking emails, responding to texts, no answering phone calls. All of this can be done in the five minute break that comes after my 30 minutes of focused work. And if my project isn't complete, I set that timer for another 30 minutes. I am so much more productive when I use the timer. The last idea I want to share with you on getting more disciplined is do a sprint challenge to hyper-focus on reaching a goal. I love a good 30-day challenge. The first 30-day challenge I ever did was a yoga 30-day challenge. I felt incredible. And my teacher was so committed to helping me reach my goal that she braved the snow and ice in the dead of winter to make sure I didn't miss a day. This podcast is day two of the 30-day challenge I've committed to for National Podcast Post Month. I've committed to this challenge as a way to help me focus and refine my workflow. It's also a way of setting deadlines I need to hit that will keep me focused. What do I win for completing this 30-day challenge? I will have content created for the new podcasting course I'm putting together. The course I said I wanted to create at the beginning of the year that still is not fully in existence yet. Here's your challenge. Do at least one of these things to help move a stalled project forward. Number one, determine why you even want to do the project. Here's a pro tip for you. If why you're doing this isn't a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that is okay. Figure it out now, cut your losses, and move on. But determine your why. Number two, make a spreadsheet to measure your behavior. Track it. See where you're spending your time. Are you doing those things that are propelling your project or your business forward? Number three, use that timer on your cell phone to help you focus on completing tasks. You will feel so accomplished. And number four, if you're up for it, do a 30-day challenge or a shorter sprint to help you hyper-focus on completing the work. But don't sit around and wait for inspiration. Show up, be disciplined, do the work, and then the magic happens. Tweet me at Brassy Broad Jen, or better yet, post a picture on Instagram of how you're incorporating one of these tools and tag me at Brassy Broad Jen. There is strength in numbers. Now tune in for episode three of this series, which is stop asking your audience to subscribe, rate, and review your show in iTunes to help new people find your show. This one's all about writing a better call to action. If you found even the smallest little nugget of wisdom in this episode, share it with a friend that needs to hear it. Don't be stingy. They will think you're an absolute rock star. I love it when I get a random text from a friend with a link to a podcast and an OMG, you've got to listen to this. Yeah, I click that link and I listen and I've discovered tons of new podcasts because of that. That's how I discover new shows. I don't find them by looking at iTunes rankings. Instagram is my jam. You can connect with me there to get the behind the scenes where my podcasting and musical worlds collide. And there are lots of cute pictures of the dog and cat. For my podcasting tutorials, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Jen Eads, E-D-D-S, Brassy. Thanks for listening. Now get out in the world and do some good. <laughs>